some celebrities uh, iCloud accounts got hacked um, and pictures were stolen from their accounts uh, the pictures were of naked naked celebrities and the pictures were sold on 4chan for Bitcoin and it's a huge huge privacy issue that has is blown up in our culture and right now everyone's talking about it and definitely a really really horrible situation for those celebrities who had their privacy invaded um, it's it's really you know it's 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 bad for them but it's, it's it brings up like interesting conversation that like everyone in the culture should really talk about and be aware of the privacy implications of this and how it relates to the cryptocurrency space of course is that the hackers originally sold the well at first they were likely trading the pictures between each other because the pictures were hacked by different people most likely um, and they they traded between each other like I have I have Kristen Ritter's picture uh, she was in the bathroom and, and, I, and I hacked her iCloud account and got her picture I'll trade it for your Jennifer Lawrence picture and there is this secret society secret like society of hackers <laughs> right brotherhood yeah <laughs> the, the brotherhood of fappening hackers <laughs> and one of them kind of realized like wait a second these are these are pretty huge like valuable pictures I can sell these for a profit on 4chan for Bitcoin and that's what they did started collecting like donations and once once the bitcoin amount hit a certain level they would release the photo to the public on on 4chan and that's basically the prevailing theory of how this happened and like since then there's been great pieces done by by people on mashable for instance mashable.com there's this journalist who basically proved that with just like a 200 dollar like underground program called EFFB or something like that with that you can basically break into people's iCloud accounts and with some clever like uh, instructions and and you know minor hacking skills you don't have to be a big time hacker to do this with just a program and some hacking skills you can break into an iCloud account and steal pictures which is pretty nuts and Apple's on the defensive right now trying to say that they're gonna improve their security in the future so um, good thing or bad thing for the Bitcoin community uh, does does this does this show that like we that there's a lot of potential in Bitcoin for like I, I don't I don't want to make it sound like that that it's a good thing they got their their pictures hacked but it, it kind of it's it's kind of it, it shows like a disturbing part of the free market almost that people can do this and, and then sell it for bitcoin i don't know what what do you what do you think evan um well if you want my honest opinion i think this could possibly be the best thing to ever happen to bitcoin <laughs> and my to my ever reason, happen to bitcoin my reasoning behind that is i saw a thread on reddit and it was at the top of reddit it was at the top of the front page so you know it was at yeah you know, it's it's legitimate it's a credible source oh yeah so um there was a huge spike in search volume for Jennifer Lawrence leak nudes on Google. Okay. Yes. And since since Bitcoin is involved in it, whenever whenever these people who are searching Jennifer Lawrence nudes, they would read the article and they would read that it was sold on 4chan for Bitcoins. Like, well the first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna go and get on 4chan and then they're gonna be disgusted and they're gonna run away and but then they're gonna Google Bitcoin. And so that's gonna that would lead to a spike in Bitcoin searches, which we know um, is strongly correlated to the Bitcoin price. The more Bitcoin is being searched on Google, the more people are buying because social awareness and interest in it is going up. Yeah, a certain percentage so, of those people googling it, even if it's a small percentage, are gonna buy some Bitcoin. Yeah. So, if this has the impact that this totally legitimate source on Reddit, um, which is a totally valid news website, if this happens, if people start searching Bitcoin more and more because of the nudes, we could see the price go up. Yeah. So far, that hasn't happened, and the whole thing is dying down, so that's probably a bad theory. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, if, if, if last year is anything to base our judgment on, it takes, like, uh, usually around a couple weeks for like news 
to really have an impact on the price, if it's going to have an impact at all. It doesn't happen instantly, but at this point we're what we're we're a week we're a week into this like scandal, and the Bitcoin price is pretty steady right now, around four hundred seventy-five or so. So it's I think there's a lot of other factors at play at the price too. There's a lot of you know there's a, as we've talked about before. There's people who you know exchange their Bitcoin for products on 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 uh, Expedia or, or Amazon or whatever through gift cards or over stock or whatever. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of factors at play. So I don't know if the fappening will have like a, a huge impact, but for at the very least, it increases awareness, increases awareness a lot of, of people kind of figuring out that number one, if they have heard about Bitcoin before, it didn't die when Mount Gox went under. It's still around. It's still going pretty strong. The ecosystem itself is stronger than ever. And, Secondly, it enables transactions between people across the internet, types of transactions that we've, we've never really seen before in the history of the world. Uh, like now people are actually, people have access to these private pictures that they stole and are giving it up to the public in exchange for this digital currency. You know, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, it's something that has never happened before and pe people have never been enabled to do before. So just that fact alone, that there's this new functionality en enabling people to transact directly peer to peer, uh, that's huge. And people learning about that is great. Increases awareness. Yeah. So, um, just to be clear with our viewers, uh, we, me and Sean both agree that uh, Jennifer Lawrence nudes are great for the Bitcoin price and that uh, the more nudes Jennifer Lawrence leaks on the internet, uh, the more valuable Bitcoin will be. So just keep that in mind in the future. Yeah, yeah. That's, don't put uh, words in my mouth, mister. Calm down. As the, as the fappening progresses. But, uh, but on a more serious note, you know, you, you brought up a good point about um, this being a scary feature of the free market, um, of having an unregulated free, unregulated free market. But I would actually have to disagree because um, obviously it's theft. It's a violation of, you know, private property, which is, uh, you know, the central tenet of, uh, of, of free markets. It's immoral. And so, um, so there's definitely, you know, a valid case for for legal action obviously um you know the free market doesn't uh doesn't require there to be no repercussions for violations against private property um you know a, a, f a true like fully functional free market would actually have uh you know legal systems in place to protect people who had their property violated so um so this is you know it's definitely an example of what can happen on a free market um, and it, Bitcoin definitely made it a lot easier because it's harder to track than, you know, say PayPal transactions. Like yep. if this guy, if this guy had started, you know, like a PayPal account and was like, well, if you send me enough dollars, I'll release some, you know, it definitely would have been easier to track them down. Um, but, uh, but like all in all, it's, uh, it's really not something that we could use as a counter argument to the free market because um because yeah it's just a you know private property violation but you know this brings me to an interesting point uh it's more of a it's more of a social issue it doesn't really have much to do with bitcoin but i've seen some people on the internet saying that uh that hacking into phones and stealing naked pictures of girls should be a sex crime do you have any opinion it should be a sex crime. Yeah, uh, like, like some kind of sexual assault. No, that's ridiculous. No, of course not. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I have to agree. I saw. Um, you know, well, you know, this this obviously comes from the Tumblr feminist community. Um, oh boy. Yeah, and it's. I th I think it's. Um, so when when I saw this, I th I thought it was kind of ironic and self contradictory, because um, these you know these feminist people. They um they're constantly saying about how you know the female body shouldn't be sexualized. It's just you know it's just a human body. It's natural and whatever. But then yeah, but it's also um, sexy. But then we have this thing with the fappening going on where people 
are having naked or women are having naked pictures of, of them being stolen and the same uh, Tumblr, the same Tumblr feminist crowd is saying, well, she's naked, so obviously it's sexual, so it should be a sex crime. Um, you know, I, I don't think they really so, understand the definition of what a sex crime is. Yeah, that that just kind of like it's kind of kind of indicative of the logic they use. You know, it's not really very sound. Um, but I mean, no I, doubt, it's a huge inv- violation of privacy, and you could make make an argument that it's like a virtual assault almost. It's a virtual assault on their privacy, but like sex crimes are physical in my mind and and i believe in the legal system as well sex crimes have to be physical a physical assault uh either like a rape or a molestation by a person physically um if you can't really you can't rape someone over the internet to my yeah knowledge. I, I agree with you but you know i have to keep in mind that uh this you know, this bunch of people, they're a very small minority, but they're also very loud on the internet. And, you know, they these are the same people that think that um, staring at a woman in public is, you know, sexual assault. So, you know, it's not it's not like we're dealing, you know, with extremely rational people here. But mm-hmm. but yeah, um it like if like if you want my personal opinion, like in no way is is this a sex crime. Like, um even using, you know, the feminist logic just because just because it's a picture an image of a naked woman doesn't mean it's sexual so we we can't consider it a sex crime on the basis of the girl being naked right um but it's definitely a huge property violation um and private property was stolen and um and, and well there's people who argue well it's not theft because they just made a copy of the picture um, but then, at the very least, they're still um, breaking into somebody's property. It's still, you know, like a breaking and entering. Yeah, and they broke, these people broken, when they, they broke took, into the people's phones. Yeah, when when these people took these pictures, they don't. They had they had no, you know, I- indication, no no purpose of like releasing it to the public. They thought they they were the only ones seeing it, and possibly just their boyfriend or husband. Uh, and. I think that I don't have an iPhone. I haven't had one in a while, but apparently when you pick, take a picture, it's uploaded automatically to iCloud. Mm-hmm. So it's not like they, they had any intention whatsoever to show this to anyone else in the world. So the fact that it gets stolen off of iCloud where they didn't even, maybe they didn't even intend for it to be on iCloud and Apple just chose to do that for them based on the default settings of the iPhone. And then boom, their privacy is hugely violated it, and huge wrong has been done to them. And I understand if they want to go after legal recourse. And now, you know, the FBI is getting involved, uh, trying to discern who hacked into iCloud, discern if if any serious criminal activity was committed and where they could, whether they can get, go after this person. And also, like you mentioned before we started the podcast, uh, so, there was Michaela Maroney, uh, she said that the pictures of her that were stolen, she took those pictures when she was a minor, when she was under 18. So now there's possible child pornography laws yeah. coming into play as well. And that, that ratchets up the seriousness of, of this situation as well. So, I mean, it's it's a huge mess. It's a huge mess. And, you know, whatever. You know, it's it, it'll, 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 all, it'll all get uh, sorted out eventually through the legal system and as well as Apple making security improvements, which really needs to happen. And also people need to get educated more about security and, and securing their photos. Like I would say, don't, don't default upload your photos to the cloud at all. Like if you have to save space, maybe back them up to the cloud and like encrypt them or something like people need to get educated about securing their own data especially if they're going to be taking naked pictures yeah i've never had an iphone before i've always had um android so i don't really know anything about the icloud but when it when stuff like that where there's like options to automatically back it up to the cloud i always opt out of it um, cause you know, once you put it on the cloud, you have no control over it because it's no longer, uh, on solely on your property anymore. Yeah. It's on um, Apple's servers. And yeah. It's pending like, on um, Apple. Like, 
if they had had it just on their phones and it wasn't on Apple servers, um, they could have had, you know, some kind of, um, a lot of people on the news who were talking about this, they've been talking about two factor authentication. It's been around, you know, for a while. Um, I first learned about it with Coinbase because, you know, they used to, you can use two factor authentication with them, but you know, you like, you have your password and then there's an extra layer of protection where um, you go to like a third party that like randomly generates a, another pin number or something that you have to put in or you know maybe you some get different from your kind phone of, right yeah yeah that's how it works with coinbase like you have your password for your account and then you can get a third party app on your phone that randomly generates a pin number that you then put into the login screen um, you know it, it might it you know it's probably different ways to go about doing it but um yeah, people, like you said, people have to educate themselves on uh, on securing their information on the internet, and you know, like never put anything on the cloud that you wouldn't want getting out. Because like if if these pictures were just on their phones, uh, you know, there's a good chance it wouldn't have happened. Because right. this guy didn't hack the actual phones, right? He hacked like iCloud. He hacked Apple servers. Exactly. So, yeah, it's um. It's definitely, definitely some publicity for Bitcoin, whether it's positive or negative, you know, yet to be determined. Either way, but, it increases um, awareness. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this is much bigger than, than Bitcoin. It's a huge, you know, it's a really gross violation of privacy and like a big breach of like private property. So. Yeah. And it's a huge learning experience as well for basically anyone who uses smartphones or uses any any type of cloud service this just doesn't go just for iCloud like learn how to secure your stuff on Dropbox Google Drive all these all these options out there none of them are truly secure like I I've I made this point on Twitter when the fappening happened as well like uh, we've we've known for a while now that the NSA basically has all this data already all the, all this data in the cloud they pretty much have access to it and these hackers just put it out in the open for everyone so you know that that's that's another angle like the nsa is like the original privacy violators <laughs> like sure get 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 angry at the hacker for for leaking this out to the whole world but you've got to realize that the nsa has been watching this stuff for a long time and they keep it private for themselves there's actually the, snowden released a story that said that <laughs> the nsa passes around yeah. nudes like baseball cards right right like oh, wow look at this one yeah, oh my little god little trophies yeah and i bet and, they pass um, around celeb news as well yeah like, and you you can't you can't trust companies like apple and google to protect that information because as much as as anti-nsa as they try to appear um i know i you know i read google and facebook um at the least there's probably even more companies actually you know they voluntarily gave up their information to the NSA because the NSA offered to buy it from them. <laughs> yep. You know, like they had a huge profit opportunity from it. So, you know, you can't eat, regardless of how anti authoritarian or, you know, pro individual liberty these companies try to be, uh, you know, like the biggest ones are putting your information up for sale. So, you know, you have yeah. to be careful what you put on the internet. You know, that's always been true. But now that we know about this huge, you know, giant monolithic NSA um, organization. Yeah, the NSA it's on even, one side and the hackers on the other side yeah, as well. It's, it's, Either it's one's going to have more, your information. It's even more important now. People really have to start taking advantage of encryption and um, two-factor authentication and just, you know, basic security measures and make your information safer. Absolutely. You hear that, people? Secure your info unless you want it getting sold on 4chan for a Bitcoin. It's not worth it. <laughs> 